Hello and welcome back to the Keeping It Real Estate podcast with Chris and Jen Bober. Jen's out working today, so I brought in a special guest, Justin Pinkerton with Arbor Bank. Um, I'm your host, Chris Bober. I've been in the business for about 14 years, um, both selling land and I auction too. So um, here at Team Bober, our mission is to build relationships by providing a positive real estate experience to exceed our clients' expectation. Our purpose is to educate and empower our clients to serve with authentic hospitality and to provide client first representation. Now, before we jump into um, some great content that we have today, just a quick reminder, if you're listening to this podcast, just click the little subscribe button. That way you are notified whenever we drop a new episode. If you're watching this on YouTube right down there, there's a subscribe button. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel, then get notifications as well. And then of course, anywhere you're seeing this on social media, just go ahead and smash that like button, follow us, comment, retweet, all the things that go on um, in the social media world to help spread the message, right? We're really trying to just get information out there to provide a service to people. So like I said, you know, in this world of real estate, as a realtor, you know, we help people through the process. But one of the biggest things that that almost always comes up is financing, right? So this is our financing matters section. We, we're trying to rate, make this a, a regular part of what we do. But I got Justin P Pinkerton here. He's a director of mortgage sales at Arbor Bank here in Omaha, Nebraska. Great partner for Nebraska Realty. Um, really love doing business with these community banks, right? We got people on the line. We can see them face to face. So Justin, thank you so much for um, coming on here today. Thanks for having me back. Um, I enjoyed the last time we did this together, Chris. So yeah, I'm excited for today too. Yeah, I think we um, between the two of us, we can um, have some great stuff to share with everyone today. Um, but as we jump into this, you know, we are in a market right now that is kind of in the middle, right? From being sometimes it's great, sometimes it's it's difficult, right? I, I wish you'd just pick a lane, but it's still the market we have to deal with. And, and as realtors, we help people to buy and sell, to invest, to build in real estate, regardless of the market um, that's out there, right? We have to be able to adapt. We have to see what's coming. Um, but the, so one of the biggest parts of every transaction is the financing. But why don't you get us up to date, right? We're in, in the middle of, or just the beginning of May in 2023. There's been a lot of things that happened, but tell me from the mortgage perspective, um, what's the, the climate out there for mortgages and financing in real estate? You know, I think the last time we we talked here a couple of months back, uh, it was a different market. On the uh, real estate industry and mortgage industry is ever changing. You know, what was what was last month is not always what it is this month. Uh, and last year is, is the same thing. But you know, from a you know quick update standpoint, we're still seeing. Um, a lot of appetite for new home purchases and financing. And, you know, there's still always the, the same reasons uh, for financing in real estate. Um, heavy purchase market in specifically in our area in, in Nebraska, right? We're, we're typically more of a seasonal type market when it comes to uh, purchases. The spring market, it's always time for excitement. And we're definitely feeling that right now. We've, we've, we've felt that probably for the last four months. So even, even still in some of the colder months, people are getting ready. They're, they've got some... Uh, some pent up demand, some that were maybe held off uh, off the lines for uh, this last year, just kind of feeling things out, you know, with uh, interest rates up and uh, home prices, things that maybe hit the headlines and give people uh, uh, a reason to pause or cause to pause. Um, and we're still seeing some of that, but um, appetite, we're still seeing uh, applications come in for pre-approval and uh, people want to buy houses. It's just, uh, again, it's a different market than what we've seen. Um, so yeah, tell me, tell me a little bit about what you're seeing on, on the real estate side, as far as, uh, changes here, just over in the last couple of months on your side. Well, yeah. So, um, the, our, our two markets really correlate back and forth with each other. Um, we are seeing the same thing you're experiencing. You probably see more on the purchase side, obviously, because you guys, have the money behind it, I would say that, um, we, we, there's a huge demand for housing. And we are way short on inventory. Um, I do see a little bit of hesitation out there from the seller side, in, in all honesty. Um, there's there's less houses going on the market. I do a, a thing every week about, you know, Nebraska Realty gives us great graphics to share what's going on in the market. And, you know, what we're seeing is less people are choosing to sell right now. And I think a lot of it's because they, they're they really happy 
in their rate, right? I mean, I know we're locked in at below 3%. So it, it's another obstacle to get through when you want to make that decision to move. And the people who are who are listing and selling are the ones who who need to move. Um, there's just, you just don't see a lot of people are like, man, now's a great time to, to sell. Now on the, on the flip side of that, the people that are selling are doing really well. I mean, we are back in a very hot seller's market uh, with low inventory, high buyer demand. We are seeing um, prices go higher and higher, right? A lot, a lot of multiple offer situations, getting over asking price. Now you do have to have some strategy with that. Right. You can't just go out there and say, well, I think it's worth 275. So let's ask 325. You know, uh, our strategy, you know, we've shared that before. We like to price it fair and then let the market drive it to where it wants to go to. But um, we are what I will say is overall, because of the, the lack of inventory that's coming on the market, overall volume is down. But prices continue to remain steady and buyer demand is, is really big, too. So um, that's our, our side of it. it. It's great if you're selling it. We are successful with our buyers, but you have to be very strategic. Yep. Um, now, on your side, for the mortgages, what are some of the challenges you, you're seeing out there? And then what are some of the solutions? I know that when this market was hot, let's say two, three, four years in the past, as it's been, it's been pretty straightforward, right? It's like, hey, house for sale. I'm going to go to my mortgage guy. Money's good. Interest rates are down. I'm offering the best financing I can get. But now that we've seen interest rates more than double in the last year, there's some other solutions out there. Tell me about some of the things that Arbor Bank's doing to help buyers be competitive and help them to to purchase a house when it, affordability is getting harder. Yeah, I you, you bring up some great points and those do correlate exactly with what we're seeing on our side too. Um, you know, a lot of what's hitting the headlines right now and has for the last year is interest rates. You, you mentioned it. It's one of the things that's that is maybe keeping some people in their house a little bit longer. They're, they've got a rate with a maybe a two, three, four in front of it. And that feels pretty darn good. Um, and I think that's eliminated some of the want purchase transactions, right? Want versus need. Uh, I need a bigger house. I need to move to a different area. Uh, I have a new job. I need to move for whatever reason versus, hey, financing is pretty cheap. I want to move. Now's the time to do it. So I think that's uh, we're, we're definitely feeling that on our side too. So that all goes, goes back to the goal planning. Um, but still the conversation to be had is, you know, what are interest rates? I, I've heard they're, I've heard they're high. So there's a lot of different opinions. So uh, a couple of things that have come into the market that really haven't been highly utilized in mainstream lending for probably the last 15 years are adjustable rate mortgages. And this type of market that we've seen um, rising interest rates in has uh, allowed those type of conversations and those types of products to re-enter the market. A lot more development has been done. Um, so these aren't the, the, uh, what used to be called the toxic arms. They're, they're not those adjustable rate mortgages of the past that we saw pre-2008. Yeah. A lot of those had prepayment penalties of all sorts of different uh, types and some that even had what are called negative amortization features. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those products uh, didn't re-enter the market, which is a fantastic thing, but um, adjustable rate mortgages is, is something that uh, a lot of consumers have taken advantage of, a little bit lower than what we've seen the 30-year fixed uh, money at here over the last year or so something that's a little bit different and more customers are open to talking about. Well, so I, I know you might, we were going to talk about another solution here in a second, but uh, for those people that are listening and watching, just give us a brief overview of what is an adjust, adjustable rate mortgage. Cause we haven't seen those around for quite some time. A lot of people in the market, you know, they, they think they know what they are, but from your perspective, give them a, a high level of what it means. Super high level. Uh, if you compare it to a traditional 30 year fixed mortgage, if a consumer was to keep a 30 year fixed mortgage for the entire 30 years and just make that minimum payment on a 30 year fix, that interest rate stays the same for the entire term of the loan. Comparing that to an adjustable rate mortgage, most of these are amortized or payment is calculated based upon a 30 year term, but the interest rate is only fixed for a portion of that term, typically a five, seven, maybe even a 10 year term. So, or 10 year period. And uh, if that loan is still in place uh, after that fixed period, then the interest rate will adjust according to the index that the interest rate is tied to. So there's still a fixed period on these loans, an adjustable rate mortgage. 
But once it hits the end of that fixed term, then it adjusts if that loan is still in place. Yeah, and there's different levels, um, di all different kinds of these, right? Some of them have a balloon that is pay that is due at the end of that, you know, where they have to have to um, refinance. Um, some of them will just adjust, like you said. Um, but why are these so popular right now? Obviously, you get a better rate, but I mean, the consensus out there is that we have a really good chance of seeing some better rates coming up here in the next couple of years, right? That's the hope. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're still seeing uh, direction from a you know, number of investors across the U.S. and uh, economists that, yeah, we, we, we think that we'll see some um, favorable rate pricing here in the very near, near future. Now, whether that's six months, 12 months down the road, that's yet to be seen. But yeah, most most indications is that we'll see some relief on the uh, mortgage rate front. So, yeah. I think where the appetite or at least the openness to the conversations for uh, adjustable rate mortgages is that if the consumer can take a lower interest rate than what they would have on that 30 year term, at least for this time frame, while they're waiting for the market to adjust and come back down to something that uh, is even under where the arm rate is, then they'll take that lower rate for the time time frame. Now, there are uh, some other scenarios that an adjustable rate mortgage can be a, a great product and it might be a, uh, a scenario where the consumer says, I'm only going to be in this house for a couple of years, two, three, four years. Mm -hmm. You know, in those types of scenarios, it does make a lot of sense to take an interest rate that's lower, that's fixed for at least that period of time that they're planning to own that home. So uh, really, it's still at the core, it doesn't change the process and the approach, right? We still have to take that goal planning approach, talking with the consumer about what are their primary goals? And we're, we talk about it on every single transaction, monthly payment goals, down payment goals. And we want to talk about that third one, time frame of ownership. So um, if we do that up front and you know, we're, we're very clear and have a, have a good game plan, chances are it will open up the uh, opportunity to talk about all sorts of different products, including these ARM products as well. Yeah, I know we have to do it with our clients as well because they get this negative you know, there's a lot of negativity out there and just we feed off negativity in our society. Um, but, they, you know, there's always something that's that's a problem out there. And, I, you know, for the longest time, it was just, just the best thing ever to buy and sell houses. And somehow it just turned right because they saw interest rates coming up. But um, you and I were talking before and you mentioned that there are some other solutions now on the on the realtor side. One of the biggest things that we see, we talk about having a lack of inventory, about a lot of people not willing to move. Well, the biggest complaint biggest fear that they have is where am I going to go? You know what I mean? Because more than yeah. likely if your house is priced correctly for its conditional location, it'll sell within a reasonable period of time. If you hire good realtors, um, they're then concerned about, okay, what's, what happens next? And we talked about a solution called a bridge loan that, that sometimes is available and you obviously have to qualify for it. Tell me about bridge loans and are you seeing more of those and how do those things work? We've seen a lot more interest and uh, questions surrounding bridge loan financing over the last two to three years than, than what we have in the last, in my opinion, in the last 10. Mm -hmm. um, and what bridge loan financing does is it allows the consumer to access the equity in their current existing home to utilize for down payment on the new house. And a lot of times that's, that's, the, that's what's tying that individual to the transaction on the new home is Hey, I need this equity out for down payment on my new house. Right. So um, bridge loan financing is a financing vehicle that does allow the extraction of that equity to use for the down payment and um, allows the consumer to, instead of listing their home for sale and hoping they find something in that time frame, right? It allows them to buy that new house, utilize that equity, Mm -hmm. and then uh, sell their home at their leisure um, after they found that new property. So can take, now they're not right for everybody. Same mm -hmm. story applies here. We want to do the goal planning. We want to educate and make sure that, you know, they're comfortable with this type of scenario because it is different, right? But at least it's, uh, it's it can be a solution that we can talk through or that we can offer. And um, a lot of times it can, it can be a great solution for clients. Yeah. And, you know, obviously they have to qualify for that because the, the, the lender, the bank, the investor, who, the people behind the mortgages are taking a risk here because they're basically um, in, in, you know, to, to clarify what you're saying, we've had people, we had a, a gal do it this week, right? We had had our ability to go in and off, write an offer that was non-contingent on our house selling because she was able to get a bridge loan in between. 
So that gives you that buffer in there. Uh, the reality is you are kind of owning two houses at one time. So it's a short term period. There is a cost to it and you do have to qualify. Like, can you carry both those payments? Right. Because you just don't get the money. You got to got to pay it back. And then um, basically they can buy their house or get it under contract and then they can sell their house. And then when they sell their house, they take that money and they roll it into the financing and, and do pr a permanent mortgage. And it sometimes allows people to get into a house before they have to sell their house and be homeless. Right. Yeah. You hit on the other piece of that, too. Um, it makes their offer on the next house even more competitive. Right. Because I, I'm sure you're seeing this. I'm, I'm seeing it on the contracts that are coming over the pre approvals. If a client wants to be competitive, uh, an offer with a contingency on the sale mm -hmm. home is um, a lot of times not competitive if there's multiple offers. So, yeah, yeah. It, it gives a gives that customer or consumer a leg up in some circumstances to be a little bit more competitive if they want to be. You bet. Yeah. And a, and a bridge loan is, you know, a little bit different because it's not a cash. We can't make a cash offer. But it's not going to be contingent on a lot of things. Sometimes it's not contingent on the appraisal. Sometimes it's not contingent on the house selling. It does put you in a more favorable position when competing and writing offers. And we were able to experience that the last week or two with a client. Got her into a house and then we're, now we're working on getting the house sold. In fact, we just got it sold yesterday. But she was confident and won that because she had that ability to have the bridge loan in place. So that, that's a great solution out there. Again, not for everyone. They have to probably qualify and there's some cost to it. So, but the, the um, having that comfort of knowing that you're not going to be homeless is a big, people have that, 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 yep. that fear of losing way more than the, that want of winning. So it's just a natural protective tendency. Um, okay. So now one of the things that, you know, at team Bober that we really kind of specialize in is helping um, sell mom and dad's house is what we call it. Right. We call it our estate and senior real estate program. Uh, we've done podcasts about it. We've done videos about it. There's a page on our website about it. And it turns out to be about a third of our business every year is people are in a situation where they have to sell mom and dad's house, whether it's the, the senior who's living there and has to transition into a different type of housing or if it's their kids or their heirs that call us and say, hey, mom or dad passed away. Um, we're, we need to sell the house to settle the estate. Um, now, from the financing perspective, um, you know, it's, it's something that we we offer to people. We do really, really well with it. But there are some some financial concerns when it comes to these things because, um, you know, some there's so many different ways to do this. You know, never every situation is going to be a little bit differently. But, yeah. you know, you've been around for a long time. When you were around these kind of estate situations, from the financing side, what are some of the things that you're seeing out there? Because we, we have people, who, our clients – we're selling or coming into some money, yep. right? And we also have to sometimes satisfy old mortgages and things like that too. Boy, I think the I think the biggest thing is um, where to start. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest questions that um, a lot of consumers have in these types of situations, where where it's an estate or a senior or um, you know maybe a family member that is helping the senior transition. Maybe it's mm -hmm. like you were saying other housing or. Uh, finding other suitable housing that meets their, their current needs too. So um, I think that having the ability to, to have an outlet, somebody like uh, you and Jen that really focus on this, you do really well with the state sales and the senior real estate community. Um, having someone to just go talk to and ask these questions, like mm -hmm. where do I start? What do I do? Because there's so many different pieces and parts to it. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I think, uh, you know, from the financing side, yeah, there's some different questions that, you know, we want to ask. Um, so it goes back to the planning. So like what, tell me a little bit about that. Um, when you started looking at this, what, why do you, what do you think some of the biggest reasons, or maybe there's, maybe there's only a couple, maybe there's one. What, what do you think the biggest reason is, is that uh, you need to have a team or somebody that really knows this part of the real estate industry and sector, like inside and out? Yeah, you know, that, that's a great question. I think, we kind of naturally fell into this just, you know, cause we only really do business by, by referral. So people we know and people that are get referred to us and where we're from in South Omaha, it's an older community. Um, we're still really tied into that community. And a lot of our parents and our grandparents are the ones who are coming to us as clients, either moving on in that transition or selling mom and dad's house. And we really look at ourselves as part of that, um, that team of, 
individuals that has to help settle that estate in a lot of times. So one of the biggest things that we do offer is uh, resources for people to do that, right? Um, having people like yourself, it, um, having a good probate attorney, having someone to help clean out the house, how to, how to do maybe an estate sale, things like that. And we come in as, as realtors and we just have to put a little bit of, of a different hat on when we do that, right? So the clients, there's a lot of times several clients, Right. So if you got mom or dad that needs to move on um, into whatever kind of type of housing, a transition, so many times they'll have an advocate there with them. So we're dealing with the decision maker of the of the actual owner. But then we're also dealing with their kids a lot of times and they're they're right there with them helping. And we have to be able to communicate with them. Um, another challenge we have is to deal with the property. Right. And, and this generation, we love working with this generation. They're very loyal. They love to refer us and they listen because they have wisdom. You know, they, they know that, you know, we're, we're the people who are do this every day. So they want to listen to us. Um, but a lot of times these people live in their houses since they get since they get married until they either pass away or have to move to somewhere to a, a different living situation. So I think Jen called it. We have a lot of first time home buyers. Sometimes these are people who are first time home sellers. They've, right. they've never sold a house because they just lived there. That's the beautiful thing about these old neighborhoods and in South Omaha, where we're from, we get a lot of that. So um, we do have to deal with the different type of property. Sometimes they're dated. Sometimes, you know, they get comfortable in them and the decor might be 20 or 30 years old. That doesn't mean it doesn't have value. That doesn't mean right. that it can't be sold. But when you're going through a, a transition like that, whether it's moving mom or dad or after they pass, so many times they don't want to come in and say, let's make this a modern house. They're like, can we just sell it like it is? And we, we, this is something I'm very experienced in. Um, and my wife on that side, she's very experienced in dealing with, um, you know, just that generation of people, just, you know, how they like to be communicated with and things like that. Um, and then of course, what most of these people don't understand, and this is what you talk about is the process. So one of the benefits of dealing with this estate and senior real estate is the heirs are coming into some money. So, so many times they need to buy a house too. You know what I mean? It's like, yep. hey, listen, we're selling mom and dad's or my aunt's house. We're going to get a chunk of change here. How do we help reinvest it in, in, in a very conscious way? And lot, most of the time they're, um, they're wanting to purchase their own house. So, or they want to say, we got a little bit of money. We're going to fix our house up and upgrade, or they're going to sell and buy, buy a bigger house. So that definitely does come into that. Um, you know, you know, in these situations, we like really like to, um, kind of advocate for housing and the investment that what a great investment real estate is. So, and, you know, a lot of times these people come and they, they haven't owned a house, but they get some money. I said, well, you just been given a gift from your, your folks that I, I'm pretty sure they, they would love to see you invest this into a home. Um, and you've seen a lot of negativity out there and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute too, but, um, you know, what what kind of advice do you give your your buyers when they think maybe it isn't a good time to buy a house? I mean, I, we're realtors. We always think it's a good time to buy a house. But from the money side, you're dealing with the numbers. What does the financing say about like investing in home ownership uh, and why it's a good time? No matter what time you're buying, why is it a good time to own a house? You know, I, I oftentimes I'll, I'm going to give you two pieces to this, but mm -hmm. still goal planning. Right. Um, are we talking short term ownership, long term ownership? Um, and, you know, is this a need or a want? And going back to are we satisfying a need of housing or relocation um, or is this just a want type of purchase? Some of the want purchases may be slowed down a little bit, but there's still a lot of need buying that needs to be done. Right. Mm -hmm. So goal planning is is a number one, you know, from a real estate standpoint, um, I always ask this question, you know, would, are there any homes that um, are maybe on the market this year that you wouldn't have wanted to buy at prices four years ago? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the question is, no, there's, there's not, there's not any properties that I wouldn't have bought at four years ago prices and still have that house to sell today. So yeah, that's the beauty of our area. I feel in the Midwest is that, you know, we've, we've been so stable over the years and, this piece I think gets missed a lot and it's not just about, oh, I'm throwing my money away with rent, right? Uh, there's an expense there that can then be turned into a mortgage. We've got taxes, homeowners insurance, maybe some PMI, whatever it is, but the appreciation of an asset, the house, the piece of real estate, that's the big thing that I think a lot of people miss and glaze over 
and get too short sighted with. And that, mm -hmm. you know, how cool is it that you've all these homes that you've sold over your career as a real estate agent, how much equity have you created for these clients? Right. It's probably astounding if you actually put the math to it. And I think that's one of the most exciting pieces of my job is that we're helping create wealth mm -hmm. while also satisfying some needs and some wants. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing that we like to key in on is, you know, you're, you've got yeah, home ownership has so many advantages. I mean, where else can you, you know, if I own a stock and I want to get the appreciation from it, I have to buy the entire stock, yeah. right? But yeah. you can actually own five, 10, 20% of a house, but you get to keep a hundred percent of that appreciation when you sell it. Plus you get the advantages of writing off your, your mortgage insurance, right? There's, if you work from home, you can write off some of that. There's, there's so many different advantages. And if you just look at it from a pure investment standpoint, it historically, it's always going to appreciate in value, right? This we don't anticipate, I don't, I, I'm going to give a prediction right here. I don't anticipate the price of the values of houses going down. Even, even when they're climbing so high, I think we're starting to see them kind of level off in, in the, the rate of appreciation. Yep. But given the fact that there are so many people out there that want to buy houses that are renting, how, how supply and demand is what's going to drive these prices. So, you know, like you said, people are like, oh, gosh, I'm going to wait until the market goes down. Well, it's not you might that might help you win a deal, but it's not going to necessarily get you a better price because we I haven't seen that since we had a recession and knock on wood here, we don't predict something like that to come up and not in the housing market, but the house that you think that is, is overpriced next year is going to be way overpriced next year and way overpriced the year after that. You sometimes you just got to kind of get with the times. Um, we so we those rates to come down. You've probably increased in house price another three, four five, maybe 10%. And yeah, probably... if you sit there and wait for rates to come down, yeah. the, the, the amount of rate, let's just say, we're in the sixes and it comes down into the fives or even fours, that's 2%. Well, it's going to appreciate more than 2% over that time. So you're actually losing money. Like the biggest challenges, of course, is qualifying and getting that down. But once you can do that, I, I just encourage people to jump into the market to build that wealth. And, and it's a different type of wealth than say, okay, I'm going to put money in the stock market. It's not a liquid wealth. I mean, you can use it in some different ways. I always um, tell my people, you're, you're kind of renting a lifestyle that your mortgage is that you're given a mortgage to pay. Yep. Right. And that gives you, you get to use it. You get to do whatever you want with it and take the full appreciation. And I always say I'm, we're investing in our like home that someday when we do pass on, that's our gift to our kids, you know, because at that point I don't need it anymore. And you know, I, it's, it's kind of like an IRA, right? You're putting it in there. So someday you can pass it on. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So Home ownership is just that something that I think everyone needs to experience. I, I, I'm hoping that we put some things in place to help people experience the American dream of home ownership. And I think there's some stuff coming that's going to help them out. And um, we know we do know that developers are working hard to try to build houses. There's a lot of lot of lot of development, a lot of houses coming. So we should yeah, we, take, we a should around, yeah, take a little cruise around any any of the communities, you know, Elkhorn, Gretna, Pavilion, La Vista, Bellevue, all of these areas. It's just it's Loading with development and there's some that are even in planning that they haven't even broke ground on yet right now. Oh yeah. So tons of them, tons of them out right. there. So they're going to keep us busy for a while, which is a good. Good thing we're in the real estate industry, um, whether it's good or bad, people still need to buy houses. Um, and like you said, it's always a, a good time to buy a house, but which well, gives us a great outlook too for our industries. Right. And especially in this area, you know, if, mm -hmm. if the builders are building, the, the developers are developing, there's still demand. Uh, if there wasn't demand, they wouldn't be breaking ground on these things and um, yep. still high demand, still not enough inventory. So Abs absolutely. No one can predict the future, but we do know that there are more houses coming and um, there's opportunity out there. But um, all right, Justin, well, I really appreciate you um, chatting with me today. Uh, we're going to make this a regular feature and um, love having you on here. So I will include Justin's information down below. He's Justin's one of our go-to guys and he's available just for questions. You know, there's sometimes we call and we don't even we're not even using him, but we say, Justin, what does this mean? So he's a great resource out there. Of course, that leads to more business and, and things like that. But um, I'll, Justin with Arbor Bank, he they do such a great job. So I'm an advocate for community banks, um, helping employ people here, helping keep our money here in Omaha um, and building up our wealth as, as a you know community in this area. And a great resource for us and for Nebraska Realty, one of our partners. So um 
Justin, thank you so much. Before we go, again, I want to give another quick reminder. Of course, if you're listening to this podcast, subscribe. Uh, feel free to share it out there. Right down there is the little subscribe button on our YouTube channel. We're creeping up there. We love to get our message out there. And then, of course, on social media, do all the things that they do out there. Um, and, and lastly, Justin, uh, I'm going to include your information, how to reach out to you. And I know he's always available, like we are, for questions, even if you're not looking to to buy right now, it's always good to kind of know what's going to happen or know what's going on. And we work with a lot of people who are going to buy or sell in the future that we're more than willing to educate right now. I'm sure you feel the same way. Spot on, Chris. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this again. I'm looking forward to more. And um, yeah, if you do have any questions, uh, reach out anytime. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. We'll see everyone next time.